I got um, six <laughs> o'clock, so I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. And uh, first item is set adjust agenda. So does anyone have anything? Nope. Is Eric, Kathleen? I have... Sorry. Eric, it's Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. On item number three, um, hey. we have to appoint uh, as a full time police officer, and that's actually a part time police officer. I don't know if it needs to be changed or whatever, but. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, is the document that we have to, we have a resolution or something in our packet, is that <clears throat> still the same? Yeah, those are all the same anyways, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, I don't think we need to adjust the agenda for that, but thank you for the clarification. Sure. Um, I'd like a full-time officer, but that's <laughs> <laughs> right. So if we, that yet. if we appoint him as full-time, does that solve your, you know, does that solve it? I don't know if he's ready to give up his full-time job yet. <laughs> oh, well, that could be a problem. <laughs> All right. So hearing no other, um, no other adjustments, let's just, roll with the agenda we have. So next up is approval of minutes from last time, which was May the 7th. Um, do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. Excellent. Second. Good. Somehow my Zoom thing here, hang on, I'm sorry. Well, I can hear you, but I just can't see you anymore. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Hang on, exit. There we go, got you back. Now I can see you all again. Um, all right, so good. Let's see if I can. <laughs> this is terrible. I need another computer screen. Um, all right, so all in favor. Uh, so, discussion on the minutes. Does anybody have anything? Changes, additions, amendments? Nope, look good to me. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. Yay. Motion passes. Um, next is communication from the audience. And so do we have an audience? Not really. Welcome, Doug. Um, I don't. Yeah. So next after that is... Town manager's report. So, Sean Fielder, tell us what's happening in your office. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, we are continuing to do our business adjustments with the state of emergency and the guidance coming out of, uh, you know, from the executive branch and then uh, reference in Vermont DOH and uh, Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Those changes, uh, I think I've noted this right along in some instances, are coming daily. And uh, we are adjusting. Um, our office operations accordingly. And in a nutshell, we're starting to ramp back up, if you will. So uh, we still have some limited access to given town offices. Uh, our essential services are uh, moving right along and appreciate everybody's hard work there. So uh, the key things to recognize, uh, just so the uh, citizens and uh, potential visitors to the office are aware, um, you know, we are asking people or requiring people to have masks, uh, make sure they're doing the social distancing we still have uh, somewhat limited access, if I can put it that way. So the way we're going about it, and we'll continue to open back up a little bit more this next week, where uh, we have our doors open uh, for the town manager's office. Uh, we actually have our door shut. So if somebody knocks, then we receive them, make sure they have a mask on. We'll probably actually go forward with entering a, a, a plexiglass a divider, maybe uh, just some way to, you know, Hey, look, we're doing this social distancing and, uh, I don't know if all the select board members are aware, but we did go forward on adding some plexiglass dividers for the clerk's office. And that really has worked well for, uh, you know, the people they've had to receive this past couple week period for uh, property tax payments. And they have a handful of limited appointments with folks doing vault research. Uh, and then also with our water and sewer payments. So that has worked really well. Um, 
just so everybody gets a feel for this, uh, it's the same theme we've had this past uh, couple week period, and that is we're not going to be right back to we're 100% manned at our or 100% uh, of personnel at our office desk is how I should say this. Uh, because we have certain employees that still have, uh, you know, kids doing school at home. Some don't have daycare lined up yet. You know, we're working through all these things as many businesses are. So, uh, you know, we're keeping uh, 40 hours or more of coverage at the town manager's office, but it isn't necessarily three of us in there full time. Similar tactic with the clerk's office. Zoning administrator, same, starting to work back in on some meetings. So we're getting through. We're doing okay. It's, uh, I mean, frankly, it's a lot to keep up with, but uh, it's what we're obligated to do. This, uh, this starts to, the same line of discussion starts to carry over to our boards and uh, other commissions in town. So uh, as an example, uh, Kristen and I, our zoning administrator, were uh, talking, uh, exchanging information this past week or so. Development Review Board is actually going to go forward with having a meeting held at the Memorial Room, the large room, on June 3rd. Uh, limited attendance, practicing the social distancing, and then allowing Zoom access. Anticipating the same for Planning Commission. Uh, Recreation Committee is probably going to be moving forward. I, I didn't get a uh, to have meetings. Um, I didn't get a chance to touch base with Conservation Commission, Cemetery Commission, uh, a handful of other groups, but. Here's the approach that we're taking, uh, keeping open communications with these groups and the chairs of these committees and um, saying to them, look, you know, we have to be ensuring we're following the social distancing practices. If you're comfortable in starting back up with your meetings, we want to make sure that works for you and the uh, committee members, uh, you know, for these groups, if that makes sense. So, you know, we're trying to stage it back in in a safe fashion. So I don't know if there's any questions on that. That sounds okay. good, Sean. All right. Um, excuse me, I gotta clear my throat. I would just quickly add if there's anyone who needs a space, the Recreation Committee is going to be meeting at the Atkins Field Pavilion. Um, yeah. That's probably a good space for others. And there's free Wi Fi. <clears throat> Sorry, I just tried to breathe my water, and I should know at this age you cannot do that. <clears throat> So um, we are, we're adapting and, and trying to roll back in. We're running this dichotomy of, you know, we've had everything kind of on hold and now we're starting to get some demand and, you know, people want to be able to get some service. So we're balancing it okay, I believe, and we're getting things ramped back up. It's not going to be back to 100%. This, the, the normal is anyone's guess when you get back to so-called normal. Um, I am pleased to announce we did launch a new phone system after some time. I think we had the old system for about 17 years. So uh, we're, that was launched this Monday. We've had a few bugs on the system, but we're working through those. Um, it's going to be a good system for all of us. Uh, it's got a lot of nice features, and um, we're you know, so far we're happy with it. As I said, we're working through some of the glitches right now, so that's good news. Let me comment on our uh, property tax and uh, payments as well as sewer and water. Uh, everybody's aware property taxes due the official date, the 10th, carried over to the 11th. We weren't sure uh, you know, where we were going to fall in regards to returns. Um, what we know at this point is uh, at this time last year, the amount not paid was $204,000 and change. And uh, we did do a good job of uh, our, our citizens and our uh, property taxpayers did a really good job this year. And actually what we are short is 299,000. So we're only off a little bit under $100,000 on what we were trying to bill for uh, in this fiscal cycle. So, um, uh, you know, this is a big thank you to all those folks with those bills. You know, you kept to it, you did it. Uh, you know, obviously the town held the line on uh, the new dates, um, you know, trying to figure out how we go about this. So again, we're only off about $95,000 as compared with this time last year. Um, we're, you know, moving forward, you know, we have to, we have to see how it goes because we uh, all need to assume there's obviously additional economic impacts that are going to be hitting all of us moving forward. Um, for uh, water and sewer, those being due on the uh, Friday the 15th, um, we're, we are off on those returns as well. So uh, the report that I got on that is um, we're about $20,000 more on our delinquents as compared with the same time last year. Our total delinquency is uh, 
on water and sewer account is 51,000. Uh, what that represents in regards to our budget is about uh, being off 11%. Please recognize I didn't get a chance to uh, pull this data out, but on this 51,000 and change, some of that were um, uh, delinquencies uh, that are uh, in advance. Uh, how I need to say this is maybe they're already under a contract situation or they have an arrangement to do a different payment schedule. So it's still considered delinquent, if that makes sense. So we're, uh, you know, we have to keep a close eye on this one. Um, you know, 11% off is obviously a problem. Um, what we are going to be doing on this enterprise fund uh, in the first part of June, we're evaluating our budget moving into the next year at the operations level. And then as done last year, we'll have a select group of folks, whoever wants to be involved, we're going to be doing a review of the water rate structures and uh, you know, uh, sewer structures just to figure out how we proceed. So we're paying attention to the data and uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, I'm just going to say this, I would anticipate on the water and sewer uh, we've got to you know, tighten the belt and we've already talked about this. We need to be prepared as a community to tighten our belt on the spending side in the event these revenues are off. And that's just a reality of the situation we're in right now. Any questions on this uh, subject matter? Okay. Um, okay, so some, uh, a couple of things here on uh, water and wastewater projects that are pretty significant. Um, we do have, uh, we're at a position where I've uh, consulted with our engineers and uh, several other consultants who are experts in the field. And we did, we knew this was gonna be coming at us and it's time that we have to do this. Uh, we're at a point where we need to take some action on doing a wastewater lagoon sludge clean out. We've been uh, setting reserves aside on this pro for this project for some time. Uh, that's through the enterprise fund, uh, separate dedicated uh, budget. And um, we are in a position where we do have the reserves and I will have more information at a future meeting, but the, this is a significant cost. Uh, bear in mind, the last time we did a sludge clean out in the community was 2007. And uh, we did some limited uh, smaller clean outs for years following up until about 2015. The, uh, the bottom line is this, we're looking at a cost of about $200,000 to get this project accomplished. If you think about it in these terms, spread it out back over these 13 years since we've done the last one, and then also recognize we do have reserve funds set aside, we have to do this. So, uh, you know, the cells, uh, sorry, I'm getting into some detail here, but uh, the lagoon that we're talking about um, is, uh, you know, should be having about two feet of sludge, and at this time it has about five feet of sludge. Why is this an issue? It could potentially lead to some discharge violations for the community and we can't afford those. So we have to take care of business here. So as I say, I'll have more information at a future meeting in regards to a proposal and have an authorization from the select board to proceed. Um, that's where that's at. On a parallel path, uh, the, the larger uh, concept around the wastewater treatment facility is this. We do know we've got a 50 year old facility. We are constantly having to do capital improvements and we're, uh, we're gonna, uh, with the uh, select board's uh, authorization, we're gonna move forward with a preliminary engineering study that will be prepared by Aldrich and Elliott PC. And this is gonna be discussed further on in the meeting. So um, I can comment more at that time when this comes up. Um, some in the field things, uh, work on the playground structure at the Mattville Pond area um, kicked off here this week. So, you know, with the loosening and the allowing of some activities, the uh, contractor was able to get in there and get work on this play structure uh, going. Um, I'm not sure if they'll be finished tomorrow, but it would be probably the first part of next week where the project's complete. And uh, thanks to the rec committee on that, I got some positive feedback from citizens in the area that it's looking really good and they're excited to see it up there. So I think that's gonna be a good thing. I've already mentioned that, um, you know, we're gonna be keeping an eye on our budget. So uh, from town manager's perspective, and I think it goes for all the offices, all the departments, you know, we're gonna be keeping a close eye on our expenses to close out this fiscal year do our best to, uh, you know, just keep to the basics, if you will. Uh, that's important uh, given where we are um, in the COVID-19 situation. And um, in early June, I already talked about this, but I'll hit it again. Uh, just, just repeat this. We're going to get into our water and wastewater system budgets for this next fiscal year. So we'll be addressing those as well. 
I have one other uh, larger uh, project item and it's for the uh, Lamoa Valley Rail Trail. It's the Creamery project. We uh, are getting our bid documentation information in order. Uh, the state of Vermont is reviewing that. VTrans is reviewing that right now. Um, we're consulting with our engineers on this, so can keeping that project going. Uh, just be advised on the Creamery project, um, on the uh, total cost for that project, uh, and, and please recall for Select Board and everybody else, uh, the way we're able to do this Creamery project is we had some carryover from the 2006 federal earmark for sidewalk and bike path work. So uh, that wasn't all used up, so the federal uh, funding allowed for us to apply it into some other areas. So it morphed into we want to do the Creamery uh, LVRT section. So this is North Main back to Slap Hill. Uh, on this project, we have to put up a 20% local match. This was known right along. And uh, the way that we're uh, strategizing on this, and I uh, just want to make sure the select board is tuned in on this and comfortable with it, and, and I believe they should be. Uh, the 20% match equates to $33,000. And the intent is we do use some capital reserve funds that we do have now. Um, they're in a, a sidewalk uh, allocation. It isn't necessarily labeled as LVRT, but it's a sidewalk allocation. And the link is this. This was a carryover from federal money to do sidewalk work. Let me put it another way. We don't have a line item that says LVRT match. So the objective is we would use the uh, sidewalk capital reserve uh, so everybody knows that sidewalk capital reserve amount now is at $50,000. It will increase a little bit July 1st, 2020. Again, the intent would be to use 33,000 of this as the match to get the criminal project uh, covered. Eric also has a pretty good handle on this if he wants to add anything on what I've just described. Um, I think on our the copy of the agenda I'm looking at, I think we have a discussion on that and a later at item number at four. It's number six. So six. thank you. I should have waited yep. on my report, but no, okay, fine. there's the there's the narrative and I'll yeah. you know got it. Sorry, I didn't I should have caught that folks. No, that's fine. Um okay, uh I guess what I'll close with is uh, you know we're obviously heading into the Memorial Day weekend and uh, please be thinking of all the service member who've lost their lives in line of duty and uh, it's really important we don't forget that sacrifice they've all made. So I'll answer any questions anybody might have. So we have a shortfall in the property taxes. And so yeah. how, how do we proceed dealing with that? A shortfall, yeah, we, do you know? Yeah. It's a very, it's a, it's a uh, I was trying to get my uh, percentage in order uh, this afternoon and I, I couldn't put my hands right on the percentage, but it's a very low percentage, Lucian. Mm -hmm. So on, on the 299, uh, Amanda's ready to add some commentary, I think, on this, but on the 299 that I, 299,000 I'd mentioned, we have a number of those that are already uh, communicating with Amanda about getting their uh, contract set up uh, to pay down over the six, next six months. So uh, Amanda, did you want to add anything there? Uh, I have, I've already been contacted. Um, like Sean said, um, numerous people have set up contracts um, and I will send out notices um, next week. And again, in like three to four weeks, um, and more people will set up six month contracts at that time also. Um, and then, um, we also do tax sale in August. Um, so we, after those notices, you start seeing more people pay, um, and start seeing more people set up contracts. Okay. So it doesn't seem like, like it's not far enough out of the ordinary to, to, um, set up any special procedure as far as, um, I mean, are we going to have to, like you mentioned, tightening belts, are there things that need to be, you know, how's our budget look like it's coming in anyway? For we're right on, we're right on pace. You know, we're, uh, the gap we're seeing as compared with last year is about $95,000. So we, uh, we're okay with being able to deal with that by a, a few adjustments here and there. Uh, maybe I put it in a different way. Uh, you know, we were careful about our budget last year when we closed mm -hmm. out the fiscal year and um, we had a little bit of reserve that we were able to uh, put away. Right. Uh, and that reserve actually was greater than $95,000. So 
we're okay is how I would say it. We're okay. Um, so. Go ahead. Sean, are we yep. um, are we in a position where we are okay to spend that um, the ed money by June first? Uh, we can cover the uh, education bill and then still be okay on our budgets to close out the fiscal year. That's a correct statement. So okay. here's what I, I I'm sorry, Lucian, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that um that was a lot uh, better than I had feared that it might be. So I'm um, I'm. Uh, Relieved. <laughs> well, again, this is a big thank you to, uh, you know, everybody who has one of these bills and, you know, keep them to it. And uh, just again, so everybody hears this, if you weren't able to pay, you have the opportunity to set up a contract with town manager's office and those are with uh, Amanda Facto. So we have that information up on our website. And, uh, you know, if anybody needs to do that, uh, you can call the town manager's office 472-6120 and we can get this uh, established for you. Those have been allowed for many years as the select board members are aware to try to help out the citizens in the community. Sean, has that been put out on Front Porch Forum? Um, hey, yeah, previously, but it could be done as a follow-up post for sure. I mean, I found with, I've done some repeats on Front Porch Forum because somebody doesn't read it on a given night, they might miss it. So it, that's something we could repost. You and, don't, uh, make um, sure, go ahead. No, I just, I just, so you don't actually reach out to people that don't pay their, that haven't come in and paid their taxes to, to talk to them about it. You wait for them to contact the law office. Is that how you're saying it works? I mean, we don't address that. We don't call them um, or email them. Um, what we do is send them two notices by mail. Okay. Okay. So uh, just on the, uh, you know, the uh, wordsmithing here on, um, you know, tighten our belt. Uh, it's not this it's it's a little bit about make sure we close out this fiscal year right but I, I also when I say tighten the bell it's for the budget that's already been approved for the next fiscal year you know we got to really carefully evaluate okay and this is something we'll be doing at the town manager's office with uh, you know in this next four to six weeks the way I think about it is the state saying you know the numbers we're hearing from the state is their revenue is off if I'm not mistaken eight percent is the most current number they're saying well, it seems to me we better be prepared to tighten up by at least that amount. Maybe that, I don't know if that's good logic or not, but just be prepared to tighten where we can. Doesn't mean we're necessarily implementing her drastic changes, but you know, just we're not being frivolous is the other way, right? We're not just going crazy on spending. We're, and we, the community's always, you know, Hardwick, Town of Hardwick's done a really good job on this over the years of managing their budgets. We'll continue to do that. That's the main point. Right, okay. So I guess it's not, what you're saying is it's not egregious and a, a big enough gap that we as a select board need to readjust the budget. It's, it's um, something you can deal with in the town manager's office probably as, as we go I, through next year. I agree with your statement fully. Okay, good, great. I've taken way more than my amount of time. So. <laughs> but they did have some questions. So Chief Cochran, settle down. <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> I think Tom is next if he's joined us. No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't think you did, but just thought I'd call on you anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Ha I happen All to know right. a little bit of what you've been doing because I've seen you out there, but maybe you could share with everybody what you've been doing. Well, on our spare time, I mean, we've been uh, sitting at town guard with lawn chairs out, sunning up, you know, getting our cans ready for the, you know, for the year and stuff. So yeah. everything's been good this week. But beside that, uh, now everybody can see what we've done down, 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 I believe. Uh, we did get all the crosswalks done. Uh, we got most of the parking areas done except for out in front of the memorial building, which needs a little bit of sweeping. Uh, and on the sweeping part, uh, we are expecting the sweeper supposedly supposed to be here next week. Uh, so we can get that up and going. Uh, banners are up. Kenny worked on a fountain, got that up and going. It is still leaking a little water, but hopefully it holds where it is. Uh, the other part that we've been doing, uh, we've graded uh, Porter Brookside. Uh, that includes Hardwick Farm, uh, Pumpkin Lane, uh, Montgomery Road. Then we went over, we've hit in uh, Ward Hill, Mount View, worked our way back from Dimmick Road, Bailey Hazen. 
a couple other smaller roads up that way, stage house, uh, Goddard Lane. And we started grading back from um, Bridgman Hillside up past Harold McCoy back. Then we ran out of chloride, but we finally got a load this afternoon of chloride, so we should be able to finish Bridgman on Tuesday. Uh, besides that, uh, we repaired a culvert uh, on uh, Montgomery Road that uh, came apart. And the other part that we've been doing is the guys have been ditching, going to beat the band on that. So uh, Curly and Todd's been doing a good job on that. Well, the rest of us have been kind of splitting off and getting the mowing season going and stuff. But we managed to uh, get from uh, Helm Nottomans all the way down to Route 16 on uh, Pumpkin Lane done. We got the upper part of Porter Brook Road done for ditch work. And then we today we finish uh, the upper half of Cobb Schoolhouse. Uh, next week, uh, we will probably end up moving on for ditch work. would we'll probably be over on the golf course road, that small section we have over there. We've got to do a little ditch work over there. Then from there, we plan on moving down to the lower half of uh, uh, Bailey Hazen Road there to redo that ditch line down through there. Uh, besides that, uh, everything's going good. Everything's holding together good. Uh, so we'll be doing a few more odds and ends, planning on getting up to East Hardwick next week and fixing our hole up there since we've got downtown pretty well wrapped up. And about it. Sweeping up to East Hardwick as well, right, Tom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll be up there yeah, for then, a day. And also, I think you forgot to mention, did some uh, hot mix patching as well. I uh, got quite a bit oh, on yeah. that recently. Yeah. Just yeah, one yeah, we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we went through, uh, I think, somewhere around 28 ton to fix all the potholes that we had downtown and some in East Arctic Village. So. I forgot to mention in the, uh, my report, and this is a public works uh, item, uh, we do have our contractors coming back to do our turnkey closeout for uh, some of the Bridgman uh, Reservoir items. So that would be the uh, grading. Uh, final uh, roof uh, tar uh, roofing application. So, you know, we're getting, uh, you know, our spades contractors and the subs are getting things taken care of there. So that's proceeding as well. What about um, paving this year, Tom? What's our situation? With well, that? yeah, um, uh, me and Sean's been talking about that. We were kind of waiting to see how the taxes came in, Eric. Yeah. And we were going to go in, go, go from that. Uh, so I guess I'll be chatting with John on that next week, you know, to see where we proceed from that. So we can start getting the bids out and stuff. Okay. So the usual pavers are up and running and available to bid. Yes. Yep. Yep. They're all up and going now. Okay. Good. Um, sounds good. I had something else, but I've forgotten it now. <laughs> I have a really quick question. This, um, Tom, this is Kaylee. Um, I see you guys out every day. You're working hard. Um, We're trying. <laughs> mainly just a question because I'm a new member, but is there a reason why we haven't marked a bike lane through town before? Uh, basically, there's no room for it because you need an uh, additional five feet. So if you take five feet on each, each side of the road, that's 10 feet. That's basically one lane that you're taking up down through Main Street. That makes sense. And the, the lanes are 11 feet wide, is that right? I think they're five feet wide, Eric. No, 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 the, reg the, the driving lanes. Oh, the regular driving, driving line. I think they're like 10 feet. Yeah, I think so. Your overall width of a driving lane is like 20 feet, and then you got, well, on some places you have an additional five feet on each, each side of the road, so you're 30 feet wide. Okay. So, Kaylee, if we took out the parking spots downtown, we could have a bike lane. I'm sure that yeah. would go over well. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> we'll, ha just, we'll have just, the real trail soon, so that they can. All right, all right. Bike on. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Anybody else have anything for Tom? These guys are working hard and trying to manage, uh, you know, distancing and everything else. And it's nice to see a good weather week. It, you know, it's, it's really good to see things starting to be spruced up after this, you know, couple month period of just unnormalness, if you will. So thanks, Tom and the crew. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a lot of good work. Um, 
All right, next up is uh, Chief Cochran with the Police Department report. Aaron, what do you have for us? Uh, let's see, last week we have, uh, as of last week, we have a fire investigation in Greensboro. Um, so we are working on that. Um, there's a big fire up there. Uh, so we have that going. Um, I think last week I reported I have somebody scheduled for the 30th of, of this month to test for the full-time position. Um, we have that going on. We are also along with every, pretty much other, every other police department in the state has gone back to the phase one of, the, of our res COVID response uh, policy, which was a policy that the state followed and we all kind of modeled after that. Um, so we've all gone back to, uh, we, as of Friday tomorrow, we'll, we'll be back to the phase one. Uh, we are going to keep uh, the office locked uh, and closed through the end of the month. Um, and we will not be doing non-criminal fingerprints um, until after the end of the month. We'll take a, take a second look at where we're at, uh, where things are at at the end of the month for that, but we're not doing employment uh, fingerprints until after that. Um, so that's kind of where we are at this point with, with, uh, with that stuff. Um, other than that, we've had some complaints for uh, on speed on Spring Street, on Lower Cherry Street. So we've been giving some attention to Spring Street, Lower Cherry, and Granite Street. I think people are avoiding the village and going that way. So um, we've been giving some attention to that area. I remind everybody the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. So um, that's pretty much where we're at with that. And then the next item is number three anyway so that's all i have here all right what's number three? Oh yeah um does anybody have any questions for aaron i just want to um say thank you to aaron and sean for um working with the um caspian lake or beach crew i know that um you have a, a lot of folks on on that um who you know and there are a lot of folks in greensboro who are pretty concerned about uh opening up the beach soon you know as the weather warms and um and with a lot of uh summer people around and i don't i just thank you for your communications and working through those issues with the folks um involved in that i mean i think it's a really important recreational facility and this my feeling is that now more than ever we need to be able to be outside safely recreating so thanks sure thank you yeah the beach uh caspian beach is open so uh up until the yesterday uh, the state guidance was not uh, beach is not necessarily recommended to be open so caspian beach is open uh aaron and i did meet with the committee two nights ago and uh, the tactic uh, is uh, we'll be posting signage and um, we do have some assistance from some of the Greensboro contacts on that to get signage out. And um, uh, basically the tactic right now is we're gonna have the signage out as far as the guidance is concerned. And we're, we're really what this comes down to is, hey visitors, do your best to be following the rules and help yourself. So it helps those people that are using this facility and in the end it protects everybody. So that's the tactic as of right now. And, and uh, Macville's open swimming now too, if anybody wants to take a dive there. And I did go swimming last night. So when somebody says it's too early, go swimming, it's not true. Okay. You can go swimming now. <laughs> All right. Um, rolling along item number one, we have, um, this says class one and two liquor licenses uh, presented by Alberta, but I thought it was a one in three in our packet. Is it's actually, uh, I'll speak for Alberta. She asked me to cover if okay. I could, and I definitely agreed to do that. So actually the agenda is inaccurate. What I've got is uh, first class uh, for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as positive pi. Second, uh, no second class, but there's a third class license for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as positive pi Hardwick. 
And then there's an outside consumption permit for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as positive ply Hardwick. So those, they're all positive ply Hardwick, first class, third class, and outdoor consumption permit. Uh, Alberta Relayed, she uh, is not aware of any issues, uh, no violations from Department of Liquor Control in the last 12 months. Could we uh, have a motion to um, approve the three liquor licenses for RBI Hardwick? I move that we approve these liquor licenses for RBI Hardwick. I'll second it. Yeah. I think Lucian got the second there. All right, uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Aye. Lucian, did I hear you? Yep, I said aye. Okay, so I think that's everybody. I saw Sherry. So that was a unanimous motion carries. And next up is um, item number two. We have Kathleen Gent here to give us an update on the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District Household Hazardous Waste Project as well as their operations currently. And I see Kathleen that you're here. So what do you have? Great. Uh, thank you, Eric. And thank you, Sean, for arranging me to be here this night, this evening. And Sherry Cornish is on our Board of Supervisors at the district. So Sherry, if you have anything you'd like to add or discuss, feel free to join in. Uh, primarily, I did want to give you an update about plans for a household hazardous waste facility. Uh, as you may well know, Central Vermont does not have a permanent HHW facility, which really restricts us in terms of being able to offer year-round services. Um, for years, we've heard from residents that um, that's one of the services they would really like to see us uh, be able to, to offer. And so we are very actively engaged in making that happen. There also uh, is state law in effect that um, really encourages every district to have a permanent facility in the region or to share facilities across districts. But we know that there's a gap. There was a study done a couple of years ago that identified Central Vermont as being a, one of the places that should have a facility. We did um, apply for a state grant to help us with, the, with our efforts, and we received a $500,000 grant in March, and um, our Board of Supervisors has committed $594,000 from our reserve funds. So uh, we are very close to having enough money uh, based on our cost estimates. We, we believe we're a couple thousand dollars, or sorry, about $200,000 short and we are pursuing grants and other uh, non-bond sources uh, to get to get enough funds for the project. We have uh, primarily focused on the location being in the Barry Montpelier East Montpelier area and Sean and others have suggested you might have property in Hardwick which um, we would certainly look at Hardwick, but Hardwick is not in the center of our district. So um, I can't say that we definitely would pursue it, but we certainly are aware that it's a possibility. We're looking to open this facility by spring 2022. Um, and things can, can come Come up, but we're optimistic that we will be able to do that. One of the uh, ideas of having a permanent facility would be that we would probably cut back some of our annual uh, collection events. However, Hardwick is in a location where 
if the facility is not in Hardwick, we would continue with our annual collection uh, HHW event here. So I did want to let you know that. Um, we also have a facility committee, an ad hoc group. If folks from Hardwick, if anyone was interested in serving on that committee, we welcome you. We also have a group that we, uh, we want to hear from every town in whatever way uh, you would like to provide feedback. Certainly having Sherry on our board is tremendously helpful, but there might be other ways as well that you would like to share information uh, tonight or otherwise. And we have a, a, a committee that we may reconvene to make sure that we get everybody's comments from uh, throughout the district. So a couple other things I did want to talk about, but let's see if you have any questions or ideas about our facility. What does that facility consist of? It will consist of uh, a, a structure uh, for HHW materials and uh, a small office and the kinds of of fire and, and other um, safety features for storing hazardous materials. The benefit of having this type of facility is that we can store uh, materials safely and then on a regular basis have those hauled to a processing location. Unlike with the event, events that we hold, the five events we hold around the district, those get transported immediately. So sometimes we we're paying um, top dollar for having that ability to, to send those directly to processing. Whereas if we have a facility, we can hold the materials a little longer and cut down on some of our expenses. Hey, Kathleen. Um, that's, I think that question's from Doug, our Hardwick Gazette reporter. I wondered if it, uh, on the website, if there's a press release with all the general information about the HHW, is there not that yet or maybe, we, did, we haven't I don't put know, it on. maybe he'd like we to do have a, Yeah, we do have a press release. Um, it's not on our website, so yeah. I, I can get that to Doug. So I, if Doug wants it, he can. I think that yeah. was Lucian actually. Lucian, it wasn't me, but yeah, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, didn't recognize your voice, Lucian. They, we also want to have a, a location that has a large enough uh, amount of acreage so that if we want to add any other programs, we can. But for now, we're only looking at the HHW program. Okay, thanks yeah. for that. Uh, also, Kathleen, you're going to talk about um, the ARC and the change in the uh, collection things there. Are you going to talk about that tonight? Yeah, I was going to briefly mention that as well, Sherry. Okay. Yeah. I did have some good, good news. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. Good news about the, uh, the Hardwick collection event because we thought we would have to uh, we thought we would have to cancel it because of COVID-19, but uh, it looks like we will be able to hold the event. We already have the permission from the select board in the town. And um, I do not have the date. It is in July. Uh, I apologize for not having the date, but we will be sending you um, materials, flyers and such. We'll be post, we're doing ads for the paper to get the date out for people. Kathleen, this is Sean. Is that the original date that was planned? Yes. Okay, I, all right, thank you. Thank you. Unless there's something unforeseen with uh, COVID or something else, that's, that is the date. Uh, Sherry uh, mentioned the ARC facility in Barrie. Uh, that is our additional recyclables collection center. And we take quite a lot of 
a, a variety of materials at the ARC. As of Wednesday, the ARC has reopened. We uh, are not taking all the materials that we have and that we will, uh, so that we can maintain all the requirements for having proper uh, protocols for COVID-19. So the materials that we are taking at the ARC are paint, batteries, bulbs, TVs, and computer and computer um, electro uh, component electronics and food straps. So that those are the materials that um, we bring. There's no cost, and um, we will be opening up the ARC for other materials later this summer. In all probability, the way that we have the ARC set up will be a little different as we get into that phase of it. Certainly the, right now, we, we have the collection for those five items that I mentioned. We have those in a different part of the building. So it's, it is quite different. Uh, we're also Kathleen. doing- Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. What I was going to say is uh, I did track down that date that we had on the books was uh, July 11th. Thank you, Sean. That's right. So the event, the uh, collection event for household hazardous waste is July 11th. So Kathleen, just to go back to the ARC, so maybe those other materials will get, will come back. We're hoping. Yeah. I have a lot of those there. materials. We have a lot of materials, many of them. I, I would even say, you know, the vast majority will come back, but because okay. some materials do involve a lot of um, hand sorting, hand yeah. sorting, and um, we're really concerned about that. And some markets have completely evaporated for some of the materials. Uh, so we have no, we have no place to uh, send them to be processed right. and recycled. It's a, it is a pretty turbulent time in the recycling world right now. Yeah, with all those single use bags and all that stuff going in the landfill. Yep. Bummer. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. Yeah. We are doing curbside sales of compost equipment at our Dairy facility, again, not at the ARC entrance, but another part of that building. And we've been doing them weekly. Um, I certainly could talk to our, our outreach manager about maybe doing a special uh, curbside collection in Hardwick, if you thought you were interested. I think we're going to do one in Bradford and Fairley because those locations are not that close to Barry, nor is hmm. So if you thought you would want to have a compost equipment curbside sale, uh, we can look at one in Harvard. I don't know. Would you have, is that something you could do as a, just a side to the uh, July 11th event, just have some products there? We could look into that. Okay. Yep. That might be the easiest to combine and then, um, you could combine the advertising and everything, maybe. And once people dump their stuff off, they've got room in their car to take it home with them. Right. We've been doing <laughs> them uh, by, by reservation, and we might have to do that as yeah. well. But we know um, sales have been wildly larger than uh, expectations, so we are, a, we might run into uh, having non-availability hmm. of the compost equipment, so. So we still are gonna have some social distancing in some respects on that date, but even something as simple as some, uh, you know, placards or handout items for folks that come and they, I mean, it's gonna be that same audience that probably would be interested in these products, you know, if that would help. Right. Yeah, good, good way to do it too. So we'll, I'll, con I'll follow up. Uh, with Sean about the compost equipment sale and, and whether we can do it at the HHW uh, event or some other some other way. But we are doing the first uh, HHW event 
for the company that does all our uh, collection of HHW, it's a private company in Williston. And the first one we're doing is June 6th. And they, um, they really see that as a, as a trial to see how things go. So it's possible that we will continue to have restrictions in place by the time we get to July. Um, things like people have to stay in their cars um, and pack all the materials in the backs of their vehicles so they can be ac accessed easily. Um, that sort of thing that people aren't used to doing, wearing masks, etc. So we, we can expect that that will probably be in place for Hardwick as well. Uh, and then finally, just wanted to let you know that we expect our our budget to come in a little uh, a, with a slight positive for the full year, which ends June thirtieth. So our our uh, financials are are strong, and we are in the final process of doing our FY twenty two budget. The 21 budget, excuse me. And um, it's basically a $1.2 million budget. We have not seen yet any real impacts of COVID-19, but uh, that may happen, so. And if there's anything else people want to discuss, I'd be happy to do that. But those were the, those were the topics. For Great, thank you, Kathleen. Does anybody have any more questions? Oh, we have Kathleen here. No, I don't. Solution. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming, Kathleen. I appreciate the well, updates. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And we'll uh, like to visit you again soon and a follow up with Sean about the details for the HHW event in July. So thanks for, uh, for hosting me tonight. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to move Thanks, us Kathleen. on. Yeah, I'm going to move us on to item number three, which is uh, select board to appoint Chad Stacy as a part-time police officer. And um, I just want to pull up that. Um, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to read the um, police officer appointment thing. It's not very long, um, but before I do that, um, Aaron, do you want to say anything about Chad or what he's what the deal is? I mean, you're adding, I know you're adding a part-time officer, and you, you still have openings for full, but yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Chad came to us um, trying to build our part-time reserve back up as we don't have currently really any right now. Um, so Chad came to us. He actually worked part time for Barry City and for the Capitol uh, Police Department. So he uh, uh, Barry City has not had a lot of work uh, for their reserves in the past year, couple of years. So he uh, has been in it since 1996. So uh, he does come with us with with quite a bit of experience um, and, and uh, has been doing it for for quite a while. So. He, uh, I think he, I, I met with him, interviewed him, and and I think he's met with some of the other guys, and uh, he's come up and done some ride-alongs to start to get to know the area a little bit. Not that he, you know, is that far away from where he lives, but um, you know, just to get to know the area because it is a big area, and uh, so he's done he's done some of that, and and uh, I think Chad will be a, be a good fit uh, for us, and he certainly has, as I said, the knowledge uh, to do the job. So, so yeah. Um, anybody have any questions for Aaron? All right, so I'm going to read through this appointment and then I would entertain a motion to, um, to make the appointment. So here's what the police officer appointment. Know all men by these presents and women, I assume that we, the undersigned select persons and town manager of the town of Hardwick, Vermont here, hereby appoint Chad A. Stacy, police officer for said town under Title 24, Section 1931, BSA, 
with all the powers granted under this section and Title 24 under Section 1935 ESA. And the date would be uh, today. And could we have a, a motion to make this appointment? I move that we make this appointment. I'll second it. All right, any discussion? If I come up with a different word for men, is there a po any possibility we could change this form? Into people or something? People, residents, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I think so. Aaron, do you know if that, uh, is that prescribed language, Aaron? Or do we have the uh, opportunity to adjust? I don't know. That's the, the same form we've had for the last 17 years and probably 20 years before that, so I don't know. <laughs> I dare say 100 years before that. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> very <laughs> possible, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like standard legalese that you see in like a deed too, right? Not anymore. Yeah. I mean, most yeah. of them have been cleaned up. Yeah. Um, this clearly was an oversight. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a project for Wiz. Yeah, it does. Wiz, you think you just uh, pointed yourself to uh, to this project? Yeah, just don't give it to uh, Davies. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> all right, all right. So, anybody have any serious discussion about this appointment? <laughs> Are you implying I'm not serious about this? No, I'm implying that we're moving, we're drifting away. <laughs> right, yes, I understand. Um, all right, all in favor of appointing, I've lost his name, Chad. Chad, St Chad A. Stacy. Chad A. Stacy to police department, please say aye. 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 Lucian, do I hear you? Yep, I think Thank aye. you. No, it's okay. I just can't see you, so it's harder to be sure I heard you when everybody speaks together. All right, no. so it was unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. And moving on, item four is select board to authorize town manager to proceed with uh, entering into agreement with Aldrich and Elliott for preliminary engineering services for assessment of capital improvement needs for the Hardwick wastewater facility treatment. Wow, that's quite a mo quite a, <laughs> But uh, yeah. uh, I'll just lead into this a little bit. I know Sean started in his report about um, needs we have of the wastewater treatment like immediately, and then this is really more looking at the long term. And this is um, this is something that really dates back several years, um, back to you know definitely to John Jewett, but it was it was a ways. A while ago when we were throwing tossing around the idea of well if we need a little more capacity we could add a little pre-treatment thing and kind of in in front of in the terms of flow in front of the treatment plant and you know but really when it come came down to it we decided what we really need to do was get our engineers involved and say let's have a look at our plant and make sure that we're functioning properly and see what we can do to maximize its performance and allow um, you know, the continued small amount of growth that we have. We want to still be able to add on a house here and there, a business here and there, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the context in which we're looking to engage these guys to review our um, our treatment plant, which is built in, help me, somebody, 78? To, uh, it's mid-70s. Something like that. Yeah, mid I that sounds right what you just said so uh it's been i my understanding is it's been pretty well maintained but we're looking at like let's kind of stay ahead of it and let's get our engineers involved and and uh and work on it so so the, the end result of this is is they'll give us a report on basically how our plan is doing and and yeah. recommendations for improvement. You know, improvement or upkeep or whatever they have is yeah right Yep. The, yeah. um, it's cycle, the cycle on this too is that uh, we already um, are, uh, we, we filed an intended use plan with the clean water uh, program at the state of Vermont uh, this last, I want to say February. And in that, all we've done is said to the state of Vermont, um, you know, Hardwick wastewater treatment facility is uh, evaluating and investigating 
what we feel are some needed improvements or capital improvements. You know, we're at our 50 year life cycle. Uh, some of the components of the wastewater facility are, you know, they've hit their life. So as an example, we're, you know, the liners, these liners, um, you know, they do wear down over time. We don't want to have it a catastrophic situation. We um, had, does anybody we, remember? Well, we, yeah, we did have one. Yeah. Yeah. The turtles, right? Yeah, that's correct. The turtles ate a hole. And- <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, uh, on the intended use plan, uh, what that does is it just gets us on a priority list so that the uh, program uh, can evaluate, all right, what, what can we provide to Hardwick? And it would be uh, some portion of that capital would be in the form of a grant. And with us getting the preliminary engineering report in order, um, it obviously is putting, uh, it's getting a really good assessment from the engineers. And uh, this phrase is starting to come up a little bit lately. It's trying to get us to, uh, where uh, we can figure out, okay, what are those things we need to do? And uh, if we have an opportunity to access funding, we want to be in a position where we'll shovel, where we are shovel ready to move forward. Um, the the scuttlebutt in various circles is there probably is going to be some type of stimulus money moving forward, as there was uh, coming you know, with the IRA money. If everybody remembers that after and then the housing crisis, you know, there's some type of stimulus money coming. So the point is this. We're getting our engineering in order, getting our 50-year review in order, so we know where we, what we have to do for investments to ensure a solid functioning system for many years to come, and hopefully to be able to access some grant to support this. Even without the stimulus money, Hardwick is in a position because of the median household income that we do get a, you know, a pretty good discount on funding uh, for projects. Uh, the most recent example, of course, being Bridgman Reservoir Project. So there's a little bit to just fill you in a little bit more on the big picture. And just so um, everyone hears, everybody knows the um, price for this original, this um, initial engineering assessment is I think 17000 plus there's a, an additional fee that's not part of the lump sum, but it could go, it could push to 19,000, but that gets us the engineering analysis and a report, and it gets us advice on what we should do. And we do have this, uh, so I'll say it again, we have this money uh, is set, it, it was being set aside for or we would use the capital reserve, which is a plant upgrade is actually what we're going to access on this. It's a pertinent application of the money and we still have a little bit left over in that line item. So it's not a, we have the money available is the point. And Sean, we need that assessment if we're going to apply for any kind of grant support for that. Is that correct? Yeah, we would need this uh, no matter what, uh, whether we decided to fund it all, um, ourselves go after grant uh, we we you know, we're not quite sure we need the engineers to really help us determine okay you know what do we need to do here I, mean, I have a little bit of expertise in wastewater but I just it's a design and there's just so many details here this is where we need to rely on their expertise go ahead Eric I'm sorry yeah no that's actually that's totally right and there's been talk you know even um, like I said dating back to John Jewett is town manager who was also, you know, into wastewater and there, you know, we had a lot of discussions about, well, did we do a little pretreatment thing? And, oh, what about the liners? And, oh, what about, you know, aerobic versus anaerobic? And, you know, basically came down to, yeah, there are a lot of ideas and we need somebody to look at our plant, assess it as it's currently operating and say, what are what are the highest needs, you know, if we need to maintain or replace components that are worn out or are there, and, and or are there ways we can make improvements? So they'll be, they'll be not only analyzing what's currently, um, like the plant's current um, condition, but also looking at ideas like, like you said, the pretreatment thing. And right. I'm talking about that also, is that part of it? Right. Right. Okay. Or yes, but um, yeah. So I think that when we first approach, I think we may have even first approached them with, "Hey, we're thinking about this pre-treatment idea," and I think they were a little bit like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" Like, <laughs> let's <laughs> okay. let's evaluate the plant and let's see where you're at. And you know, we have a limited budget, and so if they evaluate the thing and say, "Wow, you really need to replace the liners," and that's going to take all you 
you know, can muster for money, then that's the way we head. Right. But we just, we need them to evaluate it first and tell us and what we can do. So, so everybody is aware um, we are consistently meeting our discharge standards. Um, but, uh, you know, I brought up the sludge blanket issue prior. Um, you know, we, we just, we have to do that preventative maintenance. And, um, you know, when we hit this recovery phase, uh, you know, we just have to be in a position to have capacity. And if you have components that are 25, 30, 40, 50 years old, and they've hit their life cycle, it's, it's, it's not the best way to operate. So it's time we get it back to, all right, we're new and starting fresh and we're good for another 35 years. Or yeah, we have a, like a good idea to me. Yeah. At, right, least, we plan, get to, at least we have the plan. Yeah. And I believe yeah. the contract as a the um the contract has written engages Aldrich and Elliot to do this initial phase and then optionally we will have the option as the select board will have the option to engage with them for future stages if we choose to proceed with something. So I think it's all and you can read it, it's all in there. Like you can We've got it all set up so that we could just extend the contract with them at a later date to also do have them set up bid documents, for example, for a construction project and then for them to oversee the construction project, that sort of thing. I move that we authorize Sean to proceed with an agreement with Aldrich and Element, Elliot um, for engineering services around the assessing the Hardwick wastewater treatment facility. Thanks. I second that. Oh, good. And there's a schedule on this contract, but it doesn't really say like whether they'll be completing it by the end of this year or does the whole COVID thing have anything? Can they start soon? Yeah. Uh, the intent okay. is, uh, yeah, so that's not, that detail is not shown here, but the intent is definitely in this year. And uh, what we're looking at actually is a three to four month, um, maybe pushing five months, we would have our information in order. This is a type of project where if they have to put somebody in the field, you know, they don't have to be elbowing somebody so they can come right. and do their assessment. And you know, if we need to provide some records to them or plans it's a really conducive project to what we're into here with COVID-19 so good. we're okay on this. Hey, we're yeah. just on hold with some things it's good that we can actually get started on something you know. Yeah I agree. Can't can't do the assessment on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> All right any more discussion on the motion that Wiz made to authorize Sean to sign the contract with Elgin Elliott? Uh, all in favor. Good. All right. Oh, then all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. As everybody, motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, let me. Sorry, I'm flipping to my agenda. Next is um, item five: Select Board to discuss outdoor seating options for the village area for upcoming operating season. And this. Um, is something that also has been, uh, you know, in the offing here for several weeks. The idea, you know, as everybody knows, COVID-19, the restaurants were forced to close and now, you know, they're, they're, they're able to do takeout and then there's going to be seating, you know, seating at some limited capacity. And anyway, we talk, we're talking about ways in which um, maybe the town could help facilitate some sort of outdoor seating thing in our downtown area. And so Sean actually has been working with some folks on this. Um, so we, there are three uh, main areas I think that, that we're talking about here for some outdoor seating. There's um, the park between Yummy Walk and Positive Pie, which is owned by Claudia Goal, and Sean's been in contact with her. There is the little triangular space by the Swinging Bridge um, that has a table and a bike rack, I think. Um, 
a nice nice view of the river. And then the other side of the Gazette building, there's a Peace Park, which also is a nice place that I think has a couple tables in it now. There's two. So, two. So Sean, give us a little more. That's yeah, so uh, Eric, thank you. You framed that really well. So um, uh, we, you know, Eric and I talked about this a little bit last week. I know he had been contacted by, if I'm not mistaken, by Sven, and Sven Olson is on the on the, I believe, right now. Um, Claudia reached out to me. Lynn had brought it up with me. Uh, I talked to Tobin, and I think Tobin's on from Front Seat Coffee. I you know, talked to him about it this week. The, the concept from 20,000 feet is, uh, you know, we, we can maybe be supportive here as a community to offer some outdoor seating space in those locations Eric has just brought up. Another one that may be an opportunity is uh, we do have the lower, I'll call it the lower parking lot on the corner uh, adjacent to the Hardwick uh, Village restaurant. You know, right at the intersection of Wolka and Maine. So maybe there's an opportunity there. Um, the, the concept is this, uh, you know, if we can have some tables yeah. where folks are practicing yeah. their social distancing and they have an opportunity to get takeout or, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios here where they want to have, uh, you know, they want to have a restaurant, um, you know, somebody there to, 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 to excuse me, to deliver. Uh, we're just trying to figure out a way uh, to support uh, restaurants, which also supports our other businesses, which obviously is important right now. Uh, you know, that's it from 20,000 feet. Um, what I was trying to figure out uh, through this last month period is uh, um, I, I, I couldn't see us going forward on the PERCLA application process just with state of emergency and everything that's going on. And also because on a parallel path, the pedestrian and traffic safety task force is going to have a bunch of upcoming recommendations that we got to see how that goes too. So what I got thinking about right away was uh, let's think about what other spaces that we can potentially take advantage of. Uh, Claudia is interested in this and has been very supportive and we've had a handful of conversations. Um, Lynn is uh, interested, of course, too. Um, I think there's some decent opportunities here is my observation. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we wouldn't have anything in place right away, but, and you're going to have to get into some logistics of, uh, you know, how many tables spacing, you know, how, how is that all controlled on the social distancing? Uh, I don't think we need to pin all that down, you know, right now. It's just the broader concept of, uh, you know, is the select board agreeable to making a go of this? So we figure out now, okay, what are the logistics on? Can we put some small rounds tables, I mean to say, with chairs uh, in that triangular space? Do we add another picnic table in the triangular park? Do we bypass the parklet concept and just make a determination now, let's block out three or four parking spaces in the lower parking lot and make those table ready to go. Uh, you know, Claudia is agreeable to giving up her space same thing there, you know, start to get the measurements in order, um, you know, figure out how we control access. The restaurateurs are going to have to work a little bit of a dance here to figure out, you know, how, how do we get after who's serving who, or is it just a table? Uh, is it just window service walk up and then they go to this location? There's a lot there that um, I'm not going to be able to run that. The town's not going to be able to run that, but I think if we can get uh, the select board to be agreeable to using some of the space, and we can make it happen. Um, that's my two cents. I know Sven's on the call. Uh, I believe Tobin is on as well. And I'm just checking my participant list here. Um, uh, Lindsay from Positive High is here. Excellent, Lindsay, thank you. I can forgot I just... to mention, I forgot to mention, Lindsay, that we had chatted as well okay. when you had reached out. So thanks for piping in. Uh, okay. Sherry had a comment, I believe. Just a couple of other things to add to your two cents um, that we want to find. Um, how is trash going to get dealt with? Yeah. Um, because there will be trash. And yeah. we generally have overflowing trash cans on the sidewalks in the summer anyway. Um, and then, you know, we don't have any bathrooms. We don't have any public restrooms um, on Main Street, if, which has been an ongoing issue. But we, we just might want to keep it in mind. I don't know if things start to open up a little bit more if people could actually come inside and go to the restroom in the restaurant that they're, I don't know. Um, just wanted to put those two things out there and then maybe we should consider starting small in that great space if Claudia is willing to allow us to use it. I mean, it's a, it's a really nice off the street space. See how much it gets used and then grow into bigger spots. Just a suggestion. 
Uh, I'm on the phone, Claudia, and I'm I'm happy to entertain that. And I was talking to Lynn just a little while ago, and she was talking about possibly putting out one of her own, or maybe even more than one of her own picnic tables. Um, I think in the parking lot to attract people, or and also she was talking about um, tailgating or putting putting down the tailgate of her vehicle and putting some chairs around and encouraging people to sit there. Sean, were you suggesting the town would provide tables or were you expecting the rest the restaurant tours to provide tables? Yes, no, and maybe. <laughs> they were. I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I, so here's what I've said to some of the restaurant owners uh, and managers. Uh, you know, if the town could, you know, if the town could free up a little bit to put a few tables toward it, I think that my opinion is that'd be reasonable, but I'm not suggesting that the town of Hardwick buys all the tables and chairs. I think we, you know, let's figure out how we can collaboratively work, you know, to get that done. We have I talked though. Go ahead. Well, we have talked though about having the town do some increased trash pickup potentially um, to yeah, Sherry's I mean, point. Absolutely. I mean, that's something that yeah. we, that we could probably handle. Would the town also do um, safety signage as well? Um, which type of safety, like COVID the social safety? distancing? I'm just, I'm just thinking we have we have signs that we've already put at the beach in Macville, which are um, consistent with our other properties. If if this is going to happen on a town chunk, maybe it's consistent with what we've already put on our land. So my, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we start to get into some legal issues here, but my two cents on this is, um, yeah, if we need to, uh, or if the restaurants need to assist, and what I'm kind of noting is here, you know, obviously we're into some logistics and we need to make sure that everybody is comfortable how we're going about the process. So if for the triangle, we need to do a little bit of signage, that's fine. Just a caution here, I'm not following the day-to-day -day guidance on the restaurant business. So, you know, I got to just make sure, you know, I cover that accurately, <laughs> if I could say it that way. John, could I join? So, uh, you go Sven. for it. I'll, I'll start later. Oh. I think Sven oh. wanted to say something, it. I think. So I just wanted to make everyone aware that in conjunction with our landlord, LHP, we've applied for a marketing grant to promote the downtown restaurants, specifically in the historic district. And we've gotten through the first hurdle of, your application is complete, thank you. But apparently that's a pretty big hurdle. Um, we should hear in the month of June about whether we have that money. Um, we worked with Johnny um, and Lynn um, from the diner and Tobin, you know, who all sort of wrote letters in support of this grant. but. I think the town has an opportunity here to really sort of, you know, put a, put a brand out there for the summer to say, hey, you know, come eat in Hardwick. You know, we've got great local food. We've got a diverse set of, of eateries here, you know, across the economic spectrum, across the cultural spectrum. Um, and, you know, I'd love to see, you know, a downtown full of, you know, tables with umbrellas that all match the same color and sort of, you know, put forth a, a really nice image that we could promote on social media. We could get, you know, tourists from Stowe to drive up and, you know, have a burger and have a Hill Farmstead and drink a Bar Hill gin cocktail and, you know, have breakfast at a diner and coffee at front seat. But, you know, I feel like a, a sort of, I don't want to say a, you know, big bang approach, but I feel like a sort of slow trickle approach is just gonna, you know, keep us all bleeding. And that, especially if this grant comes through, you know, I, you know, yes, there's a matching requirement with the grant, but I feel like, you know, you know, I, I haven't looked at the minutiae of the grant, but I feel like picnic tables and umbrellas could be funded by the grant. I'd have to check with our landlord um, and look at the sort of the minutiae of the grant, but you know, the town and the restaurants put up a little bit of money more towards marketing and tables and whatever. I think, you know, there's a, a big chunk of money, you know, $50,000 that could go towards marketing. Sven, I have a, I have a question. Um, this is Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. In the, in the um, locations that Sean mentioned earlier, in terms of having tables be six feet apart, do you think that's enough space for the grant that you applied for and what you're envisioning? Well, the grant that I applied for was more just for a broader marketing campaign to bring tourists this summer to Hardwick, to the downtown, to shop, to eat. Um, so I'm 
you know, trying to bend and twist it to apply to the situation. But I don't see whether there's one table or 50 tables. I think we can market the town. I just would hate to have a bunch of tourists arrive up here from Stowe and, and see a bunch of, you know, beat up, mismatched, you know, picnic tables that we all cobbled together from yard sales and, you know, tailgates of pickup trucks with people sitting on them eating a ham sandwich. You know, I, I feel like there's an opportunity here for us to really brand ourselves professionally. I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. <clears throat> Hey, I gen this is Lucian. Hey, I generally um, think it's a great idea. Um, one thing I was wondering about is that the, I know I read the sign down in Macville and it said that um, per the governor's order that uh, people aren't allowed to use picnic tables, if I remember right. And so I was wondering if that's, if you know if that's going to change in the near future or how that you see that dovetailing into this. What well, I read on the, this from the state was that the tables have to be 10 feet apart. You can have no more than 10 people at one table from two, no, no more than two families. That was the one thing I read. So I, I didn't re read anything about picnic tables, but I feel like a lot of that's minutia and window dressing that could be addressed if the overall consensus of the board is to do something on this. Uh, this is Sean, let me address Lucian's comment. I may be behind the curve on that. That might be one of the things that I did not catch that was a change for the recreation area. And uh, uh, oh, okay, I think, good. So, uh, sorry, I missed that. I did an update on the sign today to say beaches are open, but I might have missed that we could use the tables as long as they're this 10 foot minimum. I will double check that tomorrow for the good of the conversation. Okay, okay good, good. Yeah, to me, this sounds like a great idea. It'd sort of be like a destination picnic town or something like that where we'd have a... <laughs> or a food outdoor food court. <laughs> Yeah, right. Concept. And it seems like it seems like there are other places around. I mean, we don't need to get into it right now, but there it seems like I'm, I know of a number of other little, really nice little spots in town that are, yeah. I believe, on private property, but people who we could approach to put a couple tables in Not if we wanted to. So, so any other select board um, comments? I mean, I think this is really just a discussion to get this idea out in front of us and figure out how we can collaborate with our some of our downtown businesses. Can I ask what would be helpful next steps for both the select board and for restaurants? We have another meeting in two weeks, so um, what kinds of things do we need to be looking at? So I would say um, <laughs> I would say that what we need is uh, one one way that that we could proceed that might be helpful. As it sounded like there was some consensus among the restaurant tour related people who are in this meeting about you know some sort of um, branded uh, approach with some nicer uh, stuff, the uh, tables, or and so if that's the case if that group is willing to put together, you know, a, a proposal or like maybe in combination with Sean's office, figure out how many or current guidance, how, how best can we put tables into these different areas? How many will actually fit? Um, and then try to put a price around that and figure out, you know, what kind of contributions we could do from the different groups of us. Um, I think that would be helpful. Absolutely. I'm going to just, I, I, maybe it's not my turn to speak, but I, I feel like if you put this out to a proposal that then comes back to the board in two weeks that then gets decided on, the, the summer is going to dribble away. I feel like. Yeah, know, so, so yeah. we can't, so the select board can only really have discussions and, um, and vote on things in public meetings. So that's really the only time that we can make decisions. However, that's why I'm kind of putting it, I'm, I'm a little bit putting it back on restaurants and also back on our town manager's office that if you guys could potentially work something out, like here's something that we think will work, here's how we see the town participating, we can receive that just as one way information via email beforehand be prepared to take action on it at our next meeting. Okay. I guess, I mean, if all the restaurateurs on this call said, hey, we'll all chip in to buy picnic tables to put at Peace Park and um, the Triangle and on Claudia's land, and that was sort of approved by the select board subject to 
you know, approval by Sean and or Aaron Cochran about adhering to the law and approval of Claudia as a private landover, what, what more would need to get discussed? And again, forgive me if I sound like I'm trying to push it along, but I'm trying to push it along. Well, well I, don't, Steph, I, I just to add, I think Sherry was was totally right in that whatever I mean it's incredibly generous to have Claudia that you're offering this space maybe that's where you start and that's just a conversation that you have with Claudia um, and then that can be the tester for the next two weeks and then and then the select board can decide on our on our properties so that way you're still moving forward. Um, the conversation is still happening, but then we're able to have an actionable um, agenda item. I, I would go ahead, John. I would think that, I mean, to my mind, it it would be okay. Like I, I see that little triangular park as a place where we have historically had a picnic table. Um, and the same with the Peace Park down below, down by the river. We've had tables down there as well, I think. And to me, it seems like if we have a group who's interested in putting together an effort or taking on this effort to um, do tables with maybe matching umbrellas or something, and it's it's really not that many, um, you know, if if there's a plan to just do it, then that also sounds good to me. I don't know, I guess. I hear the idea of the um, uh, doing it slowly, but I'm, I guess, I don't know. It doesn't, it, it seems to me that we're not gonna get a tremendous amount of tables in any case in these locations, given the 10 foot distance and all that. And um, you know, if, there, if there's a way to have them all be the same or similar and, or similar look and feel, or, or maybe, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a plan that's like all the ones in, Claudia's park look the same and maybe the ones in that little triangular park are different tables with the same umbrella or something but because maybe they're high tops because you're looking down the river I don't know um, I don't know but I, I think that to Sven's question we don't it, I don't think it is a huge drawn-out process necessarily I think we need to make sure that um, everybody's on board. I think we need to make sure that the trash is going to get taken care of and um, yeah and probably a little bit of signage about what current guidance is and maybe there's a way to just pull that off ACCD's website or health department's website or something and update it every couple of weeks as they update it. I don't know. Do the select board members have any other are there any other issues similar to like uh, you know obviously we got to deal with trash um, the signage uh, Sherry brought up, you know, we have a lack of restrooms. That's something that would be in front yeah. of us regardless of this discussion. Does anybody else have any other, uh, uh, I'll call them hurdles or concerns or logistics issues that they're thinking about right now? Kaylee? I do, I do have one just question about, um, and this has been kind of an interesting development from the state in terms of to-go alcohol. Um, I just have a question. And it's not necessarily a question, but I think that should be something that we think about as the spaces are opened up and um, how that works. And um, so I'm just thinking about that. I don't have any specific questions, but it's on my mind. How does our, um, you know, Hardwick doesn't have an open container ordinance, which is, I think, a good thing um, and maybe helps in this situation. No? I think you're right. Wait, you're saying we do or we don't? We do not. We do not, yes, I thought. It's just that it's the only question I have, we do not have an open container uh, ordinance, so that's helpful, but the servers, I don't know, but restaurant, you guys know about this stuff. I don't know how you serve it, but I guess if they go and get it themselves, then it's not a big deal, maybe. Well, we just approved a, in, outdoor space license for positive pie. So clearly there must be some sort of regulations about that. Maybe right. maybe John could talk about that. I think that. that's because they're serving. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I can talk about yeah, that a little bit. As well as the, uh, the out, so, so an outdoor space that is licensed as a liquor establishment to serve outdoors. This is um, Chief Cochran, 
generally has to have um, it has to be roped off, so you cannot access it with the exception of one point of entry and one point of exit. Um, now, as I talked with Ben earlier today, there is this this whole whole thing of to go alcohol with a wild card that none of us expected as far as the law enforcement community goes. So I don't expect that that part as this COVID stuff clears up, I don't expect that that will stay in effect. Um, and then they will have to look at uh, as far as serving what rules will apply, you know, if that does in fact uh, get taken back, which I do expect that it will, because there's going to be probably a large outcry from the law enforcement community if that is not rescinded, um, given the fact that you can go get alcohol at a mixed drink somewhere and drive home with it is mm -hmm. a big concern yeah. to many of us. Yeah, but the, the nice thing about this uh, outdoor seating plan is that we're, people are going to take it and sit down. Right, right. So, you know, the, so, like, <laughs> With positive pies, what they're doing is, is I, they're going to have a roped off area, which complies with the liquor regulations. Um, you know, Sven was going to look into it because I didn't have the answers for him today. That's not really, we, we don't force licensing. So um, he was going to, you know, I, I could encourage him to look into it for his own knowledge as well. And um, that'll take a little more research as to what's going to be legal. But I, you know, as I see it now is someone, if, if this were in play where you would have uh, picnic tables, the way I, I interpret it is that they would have to, they couldn't be served alcohol. They would have to get it as a takeout and then they could drink it on the, you know, picnic table or whatever and be within, be within the law. Under, under current regulations. Under current regulations. And then as if those get revoked or changed, then, then we can, ex or the group or whoever, some, we could um, explore this idea of roping off at least one of those areas, right? Well, we they start well, with us, but then it goes to, to, sorry, Aaron, go ahead, Aaron, sorry. You actually can't have, it has to be attached to your service area. So oh. it couldn't be a from your restaurant. It has okay. to be, um, it actually has to have one point of entry and exit. So if you're a licensed, so say positive pie can't have, they can have the outside area that has to be roped off, but they can only have one entrance and exit into their establishment. So the front doors would be their entrance and exit. I think I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, we use our side door. And I would think that by the time things loosen up, that's when things would be probably transitioning more inside. I don't think, like I, like I was just hearing, like, yeah, under the current regulations, I think things will be fine, but as things begin to loosen up, I'm sure they're gonna be shifting back to more in-house in dining. There'll, there'll be a transition period for sure, you know, in which I think it'll be a lot more clear to navigate or decide, okay, okay, now, now it's clear that they're not doing to go, or there's a transition, or maybe now we can't bring those alcohol like beverage to the picnic areas at this particular transition, you know, so I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. Um, but I think, you know, back to what Sven was saying too, I think there's just a big opportunity to all of us focus in on, you know, the town as a whole, the, the town select board as a, you know, as a whole, getting behind the idea of a marketing and branded vehicle for Hardwick um, that Sven has helped to like sort of get on board and you know, I think I think we can do a little legwork to see what we can offer the town to say, hey, this is what we can possibly use um, to to make this happen in this time of the transition. And I think something can work. I think it's a good opportunity. Just like so. and I, you know, I know Positive Pie is here to help as much as possible. That's great. It'd be you know, great. I think this, yeah. no, go, go for it. No, no I'm just saying. I think that this that, that from the towns. You know, on the town property, it's not really much different than what we have. We already have picnic tables there. We already have stuff there. So in some ways, it's kind of a minor change. Um, and, you know, if, if it was starting to get roped off or something like that, then, then that would be, to me, would be more of a major change. But I think it's a minor enough change that we as a select board could just say, we're in favor of it. Go for it, Sean. 
Um, and, you know, if we want to expand bigger, do something bigger, then we might have to revisit it. But it seems like just put it, from our point of view, we're just putting in a few more picnic tables and people are going to have take out picnics on there more often, hopefully. It's not really a huge thing. And then, you know, if, if the restaurants want us to chip in to purchase, you know, put in a bunch of money, then we'd have to talk about that as like we're potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but just as of now, it doesn't seem like it's, um, you know, the ask isn't anything that's, that's very much beyond what we're already doing. So I'd say we could just have Sean go for it. And just one question. I'm wondering if we should be concerned about uh, theft of tables, if, if we need to be uh, thinking about having these bolted down or chained up, or can we, you know, have, have something that's a little bit more uh, movable? I, I had wondered that too. I don't know if any. Uh, I'd only wondered it. I don't. I didn't wonder a conclusion or solution. So I don't know if anybody has any idea. Uh, well, we've left tables out in positive high on that side patio. I've chained them up. You know, the steel ones, the metal ones, and sometimes people prowl for metal. Um, I'm surprised sometimes that they haven't been like sort of swiped at times when they've been unlocked. Thank God, nothing's happened. You know, um, I think typically fairly safe i would say not a guarantee you know but um, um like i said yeah we've had times where we haven't locked things and there's been metal outside of those tables stacked up in winter times and over time and no one's really messed with them don't so thank our lucky scholars for that but um i think getting them up is just a big long cable with terminated at the end with ferrules and a lock you know if it really has to come down to that um so i don't think that's a big big issue for sure at least in our experience it hasn't been I think we have some stuff in that little park um, by the river. I think we have some stuff chained or, right? A couple of benches that are backed up and the one picnic table. I don't remember if the picnic table is chained down or not. But it would, wouldn't hurt to make it more difficult for people to take them. Well, it's one of the logistics issues that's going to have to be addressed. And I think it shouldn't be the, the you know, sucking up all the conversation time. I mean, yeah, we're going to have to figure out what's the security situation here. I mean, it's a given, but I think if Sean, yeah, you're on it, Sean. Do we, do we well, I'm not taking the lead, so the rest this, of the people hear this. <laughs> I think we're just discussing at this point, okay. and and um, but it if it would be helpful to me. I mean, I think what I'm hearing is that the select board generally agrees that the town manager should continue to pursue this with the restaurant owners, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. what I'm in favor of. Yeah. Okay. And, so and this can, yep. Yep. And you know, come back to us when when you feel, Sean, when you feel that you want more guidance or need more money or something. Right. Yeah. What I'm trying to figure out is, um, you know, are there some things that we can do? It's not necessarily the full completed project. You know, Sven said I don't want to necessarily stage it. I, I just my thought is I think to some degree maybe we do have to stage a little bit here. What I'm trying to figure out is you know are there something we can do um, inside of the June I forgot what our next select board meeting is but you know inside of that time to it you know for the good of the cause if I can say it that way. So uh, what I would say to the restaurant folks on the call now is. Um, I'm not going to be doing the lead on the administration. Obviously, I'm going to be assisting with sorting out, you know, how we navigate and uh, see it happen. Um, I need a half-page proposal. I need to see that these logistics are addressed. And, you know, things such as trash, um, signage, um, and you know, with this being said, any other logistics that all of you are thinking about. Uh, so, you know, with trash, you know, that's an area where the town can assist. And if we need to, you know, do a uh, uh, um, more pickup than what we had scheduled for the summer, then, you know, we can work on that, get that as a, you know, as a offering to see it through, if that makes sense. Uh, our next meeting, else? excuse me, Sean, our next meeting yeah. is two weeks from tonight. Right. It's June 4th. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've got to have some stuff on paper to be looking at, and then we can evaluate what we've got for pluses and minuses and any hurdles that we need to address, if that makes sense. I like that idea. So I, any, I would yeah. feel better having sort of something solid, a plan, you know, a, a, a layout. This is what it's going to look like. 
I mean, I've been throwing a bunch of ideas at various contacts from the restaurant group. And I mean, I had some ideas about uh, rounds as opposed to picnic tables, round tables, like I said, um, maybe a, uh, like a bar top system that is by the wrought iron. I mean, there's, there's some things I've been thinking about on this, but I don't have enough time in my day these days to be you know, leading up a certain, a lot amount, a, a huge amount of time on this, but I'd be glad to throw ideas out there and try to make it happen. That's kind of how I'm going about this. Well, I agree with the small round tops, just for the simple fact that it minimizes the chances of big groups getting together or strangers sitting with each other, which is what Sean and I have talked about before, of uh, being weary of a stranger sitting with another group and causing more issues with the COVID issue. But I agree more with the smaller tables and then you can fit more in the space as well than big picnic tables. So uh, other logistics, you know, we're going to get into uh, how, how are we going to ensure the tables are clean between uh, patrons. Um, we don't, we're not necessarily have, if it's a shared use facility, you know, we got to get into that level of detail. You know, it isn't necessarily one restaurant that is going to be out because you don't know who they came from if they did a curbside pickup, if that makes sense. So again, I'm, I, it doesn't mean it can't be done. We just have to make sure we have it covered. Right. It seems like some Maybe of those details are different if it's if it's service or if people are just doing takeout. Maybe that's something that us as restaurants can do for takeout is put in some sort of sanitary wipes or something along with the to-go bag. That way they have something so we can encourage patrons to wipe things down after as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. So when I, uh, for everybody who's on from the restaurant, uh, restaurants, what I mean by proposal is I don't need some polished, uh, you know, 10 page report. It's let's hit this at a high level and all of us are stressed right now and strapped for time, uh, you know, trying to keep up with things, but we've got to have some framework to be looking with so we don't drop the ball and have it go south on all of us. And then we're looking stupid. You know, we want to make sure this goes and we've got uh, a good procedure it's helping obviously the restaurants, but it's also helping everybody else. And to Sven's point, and I think everybody gets this, you know, if we can do this draw and keep socially distanced practices in order, it's going to be a huge asset, not just for business, uh, restaurants, but for, you know, the other businesses downtown as well. So I, I think there's a, there's a good gain to be had there is my observation. Sven, do yeah. you have anything else? I'm just curious. Uh, um, oh, I'm not muted. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I'll stop pushing. I'd love to see you guys say, you know, in concept, we're behind it. You guys work with Sean, get some picnic tables out there and have Sean work out the details with us. We can do a little subcommittee, put stuff in front of Sean. But if it has to wait two weeks, it waits two weeks. I mean, summer's here, it's Memorial Day weekend, and you have business owners here that are starving to death and, you know, bogging it down in bureaucracy for two weeks frustrates the hell out of me. But I understand you guys have a process you have to go through. If there was a way to kind of put the platter on Sean's plate, not the work, but the sort of decision about some of the minutiae around trash and wiping and sanitizing and theft. Like that doesn't seem like, it feels like it's a waste of your time. I feel like Sean can handle that. I think that's been done, Sven. I, I yeah. think we, we're we, doing that. Okay. We're doing that. Oh, okay. we, bypass, we don't need to wait two weeks, but I need okay, to see good. a proposal. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood them. Am I correct, Eric? Yeah, I mean, I think what we, we could do a formal motion and vote, but I think what we said was the board generally agrees that, that Sean should move forward with a restaurant group to make this happen. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Right? Right. Because there's not yeah. really, I mean, I suppose we could do a motion, but it, it's, it seems a little odd yeah. to me just because we're not really allocating no. funds and we're not, right? I mean. Just go. Yeah, just go. Yeah, I, mean, I asked important. Eric about this exact point um, the other day. I said, look, this is something that has to be timely and we want to make sure we're getting our check boxes covered. But, um, you know, to, to your point, Sven, and everybody else on the call here representing the restaurant business. Well, Sherry's here with her business. You know, we got to keep the we got to keep the revenue coming in. So we're, we'll try. We'll try. I guess that's where you know, that's how I've been coming about it. Does it make sense for just because we're here together talking about it to just do like a roll call for the select board so it's in the minutes? I don't know if that like makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, if people are, are would be more comfortable, we could we can definitely vote to um, we could have a motion to uh, charge Sean with working with the select with the restaurant group to make some sort of downtown outside 
eating facility happen across various properties, including some of the town owned properties. I mean, that's so fine. moved. There we go. You have a second? Yeah, I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Say hi. 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 hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> Johnny said hi. <laughs> Kaylee, I heard Kaylee. Okay. Uh, Lucian, did I hear Lucian? Yeah. Yep. Uh, he was Liz? the second. Oh, sorry. Roll call. Yeah. Liz, I didn't hear you because I think you're. Did you say yay? I said yes. Okay. Got it. So that's everybody. All right. Thank you all for I... doing this. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's really great. I think that if uh, you know, if we can have some sort of outdoor seating, I, I just think it's a good idea even without COVID because it, it gives people, there's this visual impact of coming through town and seeing people enjoying the local restaurant scene. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. a huge opportunity. I think if we just keep our, keep our noses sharp over the next couple of weeks, you know, we make plans, you know, obviously Sven, reach out to me, whatever help anybody, any of these restaurant tours, whatever resource we can do to pool together to get that information to Sean, I think it's just a great opportunity, man. Let's let's keep our pencils sharp and do this because it'll be big for the long run, for sure. So uh, for uh, everybody on the line here on the call, uh, one of the things I did bring up to, I think it was Claudia brought up today, was let's not forget, um, you know, it's not necessarily the target audience that was uh, this uh, Hardwick Neighbor to Neighbor group was designed for, but I think... <laughs> we can take advantage of that medium and say, here's what we're trying to do. Is anybody interested in providing support? So just remember that we've got that as a resource. Right. Hey, one other thing I wanted to mention and emphasize that, um, I think Eric was saying that even without COVID-19, this seems like a good thing. Um, and just that, um, that we're kind of focusing on the restaurants now, but in, in a lot of ways, I think it's a great thing just for the, the general population of Hardwick to have these places to go even if they're not actually taking out from the restaurants or whatever. And also for the long term, hopefully this COVID-19 is going to go away and hopefully we'll have some of this sort of like a little bit of infrastructure still there. So just keep that in mind as it's, as it's gone ahead. Great. Well, we're, we're, Lucian, that's a great point. And the way I'm thinking about it, I think it's been commented on here a little bit. We're bringing the, the people here so that they can be in front of our other businesses. You know, that, that's how this all works. Absolutely. That's true too. Yep. Absolutely. They're going to go by Sherry's shop. They're going to go by the bookstore. You know, they're going to be going by, you know, these other businesses. Uh, so it's helping with the exposure and, you know, spreading it around a little bit, not COVID exposure, business exposure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. no. Wrong it's word. A it's a catalyst for a deep, deep foundation okay. for that for the future. So it's a good thing. <clears throat> Sherry's ready to move on. Okay, Eric, what's next? Yes. It's because you can't kick me under the table too far apart. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate all the folks who joined in to uh, talk about this because um, it's timely and uh, and hopefully we can have a really a really attractive outcome that people will use. So, uh, real quick, restaurant uh, group. Um, we just get some email addresses in order. So as a, you know, we got just get our basic communication list established. And if anybody else from the restaurant groups interested in being involved, just that would be a decent starting point. So we can you know, keep the communications rolling. I got a handful of emails. I can take a stab at it. And if you see anybody else I've missed, let me know. Uh, you might have mine. I'm not sure if it was a. I think I do, Johnny, from when you came in last year okay, cool. on the uh, yeah, yeah. vast issue. But if not, hopefully somebody's got it and get you in the game here. Okay. I, ha I have Johnny's and I have Tobin's um, for sure. So I can, you don't have them. Sven, you want to forward them to me and I'll have them in my inbox in the morning. Yep. Sean, okay. I also have both of those. Okay, right on. Claudia, are you on the line? I am. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, it's, your, it's oh, private yeah. property that's being talked about here and it's appreciated. So we'll hopefully make a go of it here. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks everybody. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. All right. So we're moving on to item number six, which is um, discussing the LVRT Creamery Road project and the town match. Um, Sean already um, talked about the gist of this, but um, I'm going to just back up a little bit and say generally the scene for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, we had a um, 
email from Chip Troiano, our rep to the house, the state house um, yesterday, I think. And he said that the, um, the money that the legislature, well, that the governor had first put into his proposed budget and the legislature had been considering for building out the entire trail, St. Johnsbury of Swanton, that that money is, looks like it's now pretty solidly in the capital budget, which is where they wanted it. Um, it hasn't actually passed. It's not signed into law yet, but it, um, Chip was just saying that it had passed the first or the first couple of reviews of that budget. And so that was looking very promising. So, and further that the timeline that they're looking at is a two year timeline and they're talking about two state fiscal years starting July 1, 2020. So it's pretty rapid build out. So with that, um, I will also say that what they budgeted for, planned for, and are working on what VTrans is expecting to do, they are expecting that we will have the projects that we have underway completed, and those include bridges 38 and 40 getting redecked. Those are the ones heading toward East Hardwick that Blow and Cody has a contract to do. It's under that's underway. They're just waiting till they can um, have their workers close enough to finish close enough to each other to actually work in the field and finish the work. They're expecting us to have this Creamery Road project done that we're talking about tonight. And they're expecting us slash VAST VTrans to have a section from North Main Street to Wolcott Street done as well. So um, anyway, just generally the, the prospects of getting the LVRT completed are looking really good. Um, the Creamery Road project is one that it probably many of you remember started as it was just going to be a parking lot uh, near the town garage that also you can walk across to the depot and to the townhouse. Um, and then it kind of that project and that was fun that it was is funded through a federal earmark that we've had for since 2006, I believe. Um, and that earmark has, I don't remember, 130,000 remaining on it, 160, something like that. Anyway, um, so this, instead of just doing that parking lot, we expanded that before the state stepped up to say they were finishing the rail trail. We expanded the, the scope to include finishing the rail trail by the depot along Creamery Road, basically. So that's what we're talking about tonight. And the issue before the select board is simply um, to give the go ahead to use money that's currently in the capital fund uh, marked for sidewalks to use some of the sidewalk money as our 20% match for the federal earmark to do this project that we've been planning for years and years. So that's a very long lead in. Does anybody have any uh, comments, questions? So how much money? How much money are you? Is is the match? The, uh, right. So it's a maximum of if we if we mat if so the the <clears throat> short answer is we don't know um, the estimate cost estimate from Summit Engineering is in the seventy to eighty thousand dollar range for a total project cost of which we'd be liable for twenty percent um, the upper end limit like if we had to if we used the entire remaining funds on the earmark i think we would need 33,000 to match all that money so that would be like the top end estimate um we also have i think an email from Casey late today indicated that we still have $5,000 in our bike path um, capital, which is a little more closely related to this. So we could spend that down first, right? And take yep. that off yeah. and, then, yes. and then do the, yeah. and then dip into the sidewalks as necessary. And sidewalks oh. currently have 50 grand ish in them. And so we'd only have to that. access 28 from sidewalks, assuming we did the full project cost at 169. Uh, the full earmark, that's a full earmark spend down, right? That's correct. But if the, we did the full spend down, that would be the worst case scenario. Right. 
So the, meeting. but but the, I guess I'm a little bit confused because the so it sounds like you said the project is seventy five to eighty thousand. Is this the estimate for the project? Yeah, but we won't know for sure until we go to bid. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so if it gets bid for more than that, then okay, yeah. Yeah, then we so we don't even we have, really, we have more than that available. We ha correct. Basic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eric, I do not raise this as an objection, only as a, how do we handle, the, I mean, there's a lot of need for a lot of sidewalk work in this that village. That is true. And yes, there is. What do we say to people who say, look, that, that money was supposed to go to sidewalks and now you're spending it for bicycles. Um, I don't, I'm all for the project, I just think this is a, um, I need some talking points in case I'm approached about this. So I guess I would say in response to that, that um, originally this earmark was, um, gosh, I wish I could remember. It was a million dollars roughly, I think. And it was to build a bike path. That's what the earmark was for. Um, we are down to having a little over $100,000 left on the earmark. We don't have a bike path. We have, however, used a lot of that money to build sidewalks. On sidewalks. <laughs> That's what I need to know. So yeah. All of the new sidewalks up in front of the elementary school, um, all of that, the Kirby and everything. That, yeah. So Eric, it's, it is true that we still need a lot of sidewalk work. It is true. But this isn't necessarily, I mean, we need to be continually building the, what's left in that budget for that other sidewalk work that we do need. But this was originally the bike path money. Okay, and this is an economic development project for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And theoretically, with, with a better, better cash flow in the town, we can go after the sidewalks. Um, Eric, Kaylee, Eric, do you yeah. Just repeating what you said about when the just I don't understand. So when the the money was initially earmarked for the rail trail project, am I no, understanding sorry. that correctly? Yeah, it wasn't for the rail trail. It was for Hardwick to build a bike path, which was going to be a different location. Okay. Yep. So we were gonna we did a lot of things with that money. I mean, I think we up. Uh, we tuned up the swinging bridge, we paved the Daniels Road, we did sidewalks, as Sherry just pointed out, in front of the elementary school, that kind of whole um, South Main Street project. I mean, we, we'd done a lot of stuff with that earmark, but boy, we did not build a bike path. Because we had the problems that we continue to have with having a place to put that bike path alongside the road or up right. on the grass or right, right. and how do you get across county street bridge and all that yeah. stuff right yep yeah there are lots of there are lots of reasons there were lots of obstacles and lots of reasons why every, at every turn the bike path never got built but um yeah i am really trying don't. to hold my breath and tell old business but we do have bike racks that don't seem to be out. So maybe Sean, uh, Tom could look, find out where the heck those are. I, I don't think we have any bike racks. I know one that was talked yep. about is no longer in existence. I'm wrong. I'll check with Tom. Where did it go? It, there was one, one that got... was new that was across from the, um, across from Whistle right there on the, in that mm -hmm. little triangle park. Disappeared, huh? I, I'll have to check with Tom, Sherry. I, I will check. Can I offer just one more thing on the sidewalk discussion? Yeah. Um, we still do have some reserve in there. And while we haven't done, you know, uh, say four or five or 600 foot section, we are trying to do some spot checks. So obviously we know we got to keep working on this. So the only point I'm making here is, you know, last year we did do a few improvements where we're not just not doing anything is all I'm trying to say. You know, we are trying to do some spot checks and, I mean, it's not good. I know this. And as you know, by the town manager's office, as an example, it's really challenging for anybody who has a mobility problem to get around that area right there. I know this. So um, we got to do a better job and we'll tune into that and try to get it accomplished. 
So um so I just want to go back to money again. So if we um it sounds like if it does come in to say around eighty thousand, then we would be paying out I guess I'm trying to get a handle again on the on the sidewalk capital fund. Mm -hmm. Um the sort of the different options. So if we say it comes in at eighty thousand well let's just say it comes in a hundred thousand to make it easy. So then we'd be paying twenty thousand out for this yep. this thing. Okay. But five of that would be from the the actual bike path. Capital. I forget what you call it, bike path capital fund. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. it would only be 15 out of the sidewalks. So Correct. And and so right. we would There's still have 50. how much left in the sidewalks? 35. We still have 35 left in the sidewalks. So yep. it's 50. Okay. And, and this discussion that we're having right now is just because um, uh, it's coming up and we're uh, Want to, you know, just in, in looking at the lay of the land and the whole LVRT things that were all these projects that we had moving plus the state now picking up, um, we just started to look around and say, all right, like, let's just solidify. Where's the match for this? Where's the match for that? And um, so this came up as, well, here's the match for the Creamery Road project is going to entail some money in addition to what's in the bike path, the next most logical place is probably sidewalks since we've also used a lot of this earmark for sidewalks. So we, as a select board, when we get to the point of um, go, uh, signing a contract with somebody after we go to bid, then we'll know the details of what it's actually gonna cost. And I think right now the status is that it's um, the plans are still uh, at VTrans under review. Is that correct, Sean? Yeah. The only wild card is uh, we do have to have a resident engineer involved. So Doug's estimate was 80. It's going to be a little bit north of that because for the it's a federal project. Right. So we do right. have to have a resident engineer involved. Which is the other reason we threw out like, okay, so the maximum we might end up spending would be the match to cover the whole remaining amount of the year mark. But it's unlikely that it'll be that high. Right, okay. So this discussion is more of sort of like the last discussion is more of a principle of, of are we generally in favor of using that? Is that? Yeah, or yeah, if you have a, or yeah, or I'd spin it even the, to the other way. If you have a problem with it, like let's hear about that now and right. think about other ways to do it right right and let's not wait until we all right like we have bids in hand we're ready to select one and then say oh no where's the match coming from right right yeah Be i ready. think this was discussed before if i remember right that we discussed yep. somehow it's come up that this is where the match was going to come from so it's yep it has come memory. up okay yeah okay. and, and we had one significant logistical problem last year i'm hoping we can avoid another one <laughs> right, Wes? What do you mean? We had to, we had to, the, so it turned out last year we had this thing where the um, historical society, and actually I had assumed that the reason that the, that the, the rails had been left intentionally in front of the depot to mark the historical significance. And then it turned out that VTrans um, and, and or VAST had just said, imagined, well, those will come out later when we build the trail. And so there was this difference of uh, vision around that. And so it took a little, a little bit of um, visiting and talking through and measuring and realizing, oh, okay, the trail can go right beside the old tracks. But they had to go through some historic review and uh, stuff re-engineering and stuff i remember that yeah a little bit yeah. of re-engineering just had to move it over so the awesome thing is we're going to have that you know everybody knows that depot is an amazing facility and uh, for the entire length of the lvrt trail it's going to be the only you know refinished historical society train depot with tracks uh you know original to the lvrt so it's pretty uh, unique what we're going to have there it's a good thing Yeah, well, I think I think it makes sense. I mean, I, I do think it's a little uncomfortable because we, of course, we always do need, you know, the sidewalk situation, like I was already pointed out. But I think I'm I'm in favor of it. I think it's a decision that it'll have good, great benefit for the town, for the town's people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's also worth noting that um, while I don't have any direct evidence of this, um, it does seem that 
all the pushing that we've done here in Hardwick to try to build small sections of this of the LVRT on our own and Cambridge has done had similar efforts to really try to push and um, I think that that was seen at a state level as um, you know a cry from towns like hey we really want this thing to to be built um, and it seems like we were heard and uh, and now it seems like the state's going to step up and complete Maybe connect. Yeah, the whole thing. Hey, could I just chime in? I'm sorry. Sven, yeah. I think it's important that you guys also note is that the grant that was applied for for marketing, one of the outputs of the grant is a marketing plan, a five-year marketing plan with the intention of marketing around this whole rail trail project and with the intention of being able to go back to the USDA in a year or two to say, hey, we did this five-year plan back in 2020. We'd now like a bunch of money to execute that plan to, to promote the rail trails. I just wanted to throw that out there as a, just to have it in everyone's mind. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right. The picnic table's over by the rail trail. Exactly, well, yeah, ultimately <laughs> we, we plan to have some picnic tables over by the rail trail and another thing that'll come up at some point as I still am thinking we got it we, we there must be some way that we can help with like wayfinding or encouraging people who are crossing there by the Memorial Park to drop into downtown um, right because you can just you, you can see it from there right so we're gonna have an, a we're gonna have an electric uh, old-fashioned train shuttle it's gonna bring yeah. them right down there you've been talking to <laughs> Sherry it <laughs> work, works for me I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yep. Unless, is everybody good? Yeah. Is everybody all right with that as an update? Anybody have problems? All right. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Rolling along. Next is select board reports, new business, old business. I'm going to put them all together. Speak now. Nope. All right. Beautiful. Um, well, thank real quick, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost done, Sean. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna move forward on looking at blocking out a few spots in that lower lot. I assume I have the authority to do that. You do. Okay. I'll keep on right. it as best I can. You're talking about the tables in the diner parking lot. Yeah. Yep. As a part of this. Uh, so, Sean, have you had any ability to connect with David about the whole um, townhouse uh, sight lines and all that jazz? Or no, I have not. Like, sure. Put a little bug in your ear about that, and because I'm hoping that uh, in coming weeks that we'll be able to get the field visit done by historic preservation people, and maybe we can get a few bids. You know, because that grant's due in July. Just say. Yeah, remind me. Yeah, okay. So do me a favor, Sherry, and just uh, uh, bump me an email on that if you would, and then we'll make sure we keep it out in front of us here. Okay. I just really quickly wanted to um, give a shout out to David O'Brien, who built a little free library for public use in East Hardwick, and it's currently up and it's awesome and it's COVID safe, there's sanitizer. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for that um, and to the Eno group for putting that together. Yeah, it's super cute. Yeah, I saw it, it is really cute. Yeah, awesome. All right, any other reports, new business, old business? Going once, going twice, adjourn. Thank you everybody.